Hi all, let's get a gist of another very exciting game that happened in TSEC Season 19 Premier Division. This is round 18, the mighty Stockfish is playing against Stofflays. So d4 we have knight f6, knight f3, e6, c4, b6, this is Queen's Indian territory. And we have this bishop b4 check, this disruptive check to get white to play bishop d2. Bishop e7, so the idea, well one of the ideas is that white's influence over d4 has been disconnected for the moment. Knight c3, we have bishop b7, bishop g2, both sides castle, and now knight a6. So this doesn't interfere with the bishop's control over the critical e4 square. So there are some similarities with the Nimza engine. This control of e4 is a focus for black. This is the end of the book here. And Stockfish chooses rook c1. This looks like a good positional move. We have now d5. C takes d5. E takes. Bishop f4. h6. We have now queen c2 in this position. There is a high level over the board game here with knight e5. Varga against Farago in Hungary 1993, which ended in a win for white. White got a nice position like this. It does seem as though this variation in general is very comfortable for white, for example like this, getting a big advantage from here and, and ending up winning uh, later in 42 moves. So anyway, queen c2 was played here. We have queen d7. This looks as though it encourages a tempo gainer this move and um, maybe it it might in my view it might not be the the, the safest move going uh, there has been a high level over the ball game here with rook e8 just just leaving the queen on d8 for the moment and after rook fd1 c6 uh, knight e5 bishop d6 the thing is even here though white did get technically in this stem game a significant advantage by breaking open the center with e4. Uh, the funny thing is black did actually win later. Uh, white played a nice tactic as well and still lost from this position but it wasn't because of this particular position. This is actually quite good for white in a technical sense. That was Jay Christiansen against Bozic in uh, the Moscow tournament of 2019 but um, yeah White was doing well there, even with that. You know, that rookie eight doesn't really change the picture here. I think White's got a nice positional advantage in this position. So we have Queen D7, and Stockfish does indulge the tempo gain. So just kick that Queen, and now Knight D3. And this also does imply now that White can play Bishop E5 and Knight F4 if needed. And you can see that both of these pieces would be hitting or indirectly d5. If white can take out f6, then d5 is going to be even looser. So this is a bit of a dangerous scenario uh, where there's bishop e5 and knight f4. Right now it's already kind of trouble, you could say, for black. A very comfortable position indeed, positionally. Uh, we have g5. Pawns don't go backwards unless alpha zero <laughs> changes the rules of chess no but I, I i hope pawns will not go backwards at least for the next few hundred years so this is a committal pawn uh weakness and now we have bishop e3 and now we have rook a c8 knight e5 now okay black has fended off the knight f4 ideas but at what cost the knight going back here with a vengeance, poking into quite a few light squares now. So the light squares, corresponding light squares, have been compromised by that g5 move. We see now knight b4. Okay, black has a tempo gain. Bit of fun on the queen. c5. But here, g5 is also now used as a lever to try and peel open black's king position, king safety issues after f4. Yeah, the pawns around the king especially are particularly sensitive. You don't really want to push them because you're also exposing the king, potentially. So f4 does seem a very logical move. The rook hasn't moved at all. It's optimal 
So on F1 it just gets active through F4. In this position, you know, the general rule about not moving the F pawn doesn't hold because the diagonal is pretty safe for the white king here. There's no way it, you know, it seems black's not really in position to exploit the the diagonal being weakened by F4. It's just a very upside move without too many downsides here. So G takes uh, if this tempo gaining was indulged with it it's really mostly it's really harmless actually after queen a4 and the queen just dropping back i mean there's there's really no point why it's just better there as well so after f4 it seems already this is a very bad position already uh for stuff lays uh after g takes f4 now white has uh various ideas including further harassing the queen on e6 uh, with you know potentially rook f3 and bishop h3 and it's horrible diagonal we have queen f5 here if bishop d6 is an alternative knight b5 is interesting and here f5 and then bishop takes h6 is a total disaster for black uh, but you know there are other issues here like knight takes a7 as well it's it's just horrendous position uh so okay so queen f5 was chosen and we do have this rook f3 with an imminent threat not just to win a tempo off the queen but to kind of potentially trap that queen sometimes uh the queen has got some squares at the moment though uh, we have king h7 that does take away the h7 square from the queen bishop h3 queen h5 uh, the check indulging the check doesn't really change the picture here after king h1 the queen's you know going to go to h5 there and white's maybe going to kick this knight back and, and just be better here with this check for example here and then just win the rook so that would be a disaster for black as well so we have uh, bishop uh, h3 queen h5 not indulging the check and here actually instead of uh, taking the rook in fact stockfish plays king h1 you might have a question here can stockfish just take the exchange instead of what was played king h1 the reason uh, I believe King H1 is stronger. If we look at Bishop takes C8 here, it seems Black can play check, and this Bishop actually, you know, without a counterpart, which I consider one of Stofflay's uh, specialities, the Bishop without a counterpart, it seems to offer at least a little bit of hope, a glimmer of hope, of the Bishop F5, for example, rerouting, and this is just a sample continuation. It seems as though maybe. The light square bishop can play a role in trying to equalize this is just a fictional continuation but if you know if, if there's also an opposite kind of bishop scenario emerging then the, the chances of drawing maybe go up later so stockfish's move just totally bypasses getting the exchange here with bishop takes c8 it's the pieces really their strength is is relative to the pawn structure and and quite often, you know, bishops without counterparts are more meaningful. And, you know, White's king has been a little bit compromised anyway. So what was played king h1 here is is significantly stronger than taking the exchange, it seems. So very, very interesting alternative and very dangerous. So what's happening here? Well, the rook does move and now this knight's kicked back. And the point is revealed queen c2 check and now bishop g2 yes this is much better to try and win the queen by using rook h3 here you can see the knights covering g6 right now look it's like hunting down the queen in this position uh ruthlessly so we see black's queen in real trouble now we see knight takes e5, but you know what else? Uh, instead of knight takes e5, if if rook g8, for example, then rook h3. So white's getting the queen. If c takes d4, then rook h3. 
the, if the queen sacrifices herself here you know you might think there's some vague hope of the diagonal being dangerous but this is extinguishable with knight e4 tactically hitting the bishop and then knight takes f6 and then queen f5 and it's just harmless it's just harmless why it's got a massive advantage so knight takes e5 was tried forcing inducing essentially well it's winning the queen after rook h3 uh, the thing is black has to do a queen sacrifice here has to uh, so and plays queen takes h3 you might ask well why why not queen g6 the problem is d takes e5 and things will be crumbling for black in a very bad way for example knight g4 knight takes d5 winning a big center pawn and here for example you know if this is the best black can do it's not good enough it's absolutely uh, not good enough uh, bishop takes c5 here uh, and hits the rook on f8 uh, and yeah it's it's just that it all ends up winning for white let's just go back there so queen g6 d takes knight g4 uh, so there's knight takes d5 and even uh, there's f5 as well actually this is also uh, a big advantage for white this kind of scenario as well so there are lots of ways to get a huge advantage after queen g6 so it wasn't played yeah it's to do with like losing the center essentially so the queen sacrifice is for the moment interesting let's see what happens now bishop takes we have knight eg4 but now the bishop tucks away on g1 kind of defending critical squares rook g8 and here things get interesting queen a4 just it seems pedantic to be using the extra queen to you know attack a7 <laughs> but but that's the case a6 is played if rook g7 yeah then the white queen does have fun chewing some pawns over there for example like this wins the bishop so black's kind of tied down it's not just winning pawns it's tying down the pieces and if uh, the bishop did move then you know potentially white's protecting and then chewing another pawn and just getting torn to pieces actually on the queen side and losing the center pawn after and there's no frats here with the doubled rooks so this is just be horrendous so in fact queen a4 does threaten to do a lot of damage so a6 is played and now bishop g2 and we have here uh, bishop g2 b5 was played queen c2 b4 knight a4 and we have c4 okay for the moment it looks as though hold on does black have any compensation we have the knight kicked back but now where is it actually kicked back to it's actually b1 here. it has to give itself up the poor knight it's is taken as well bishop d6 e3 just creating solidity bishop f2 and now rook takes g2 if the rook's doubled here then bishop f3 is solid enough the bishop's covering all key squares after a takes this position is just hopeless you can see that f5 wins material there so what happens here it's it's hopeless okay so um if if the bishop moved sorry after knight b6 to b7 then for example bishop h4 and knight takes c4 exploits that pin against b7 so yeah it's a, it's a lot of carnage this game so bishop f2 and now so Paul off is giving up another exchange now um and this doesn't seem that sound really b3 queen d2 we have knight e4 okay there's an inconvenience uh, with the knight on e4 but let's see uh you know bishop f5 we have bishop h4 so the queen doesn't have to so, sort of nanny the bishop on f2 and in fact okay the queen's nannying on h4 but the bishop just goes to d8 so uh it's you know the queen's free now and if the rook went back you could imagine queen h4 making progress there uh so the rook didn't bother you know going back we have king g7 and now queen a5 on that side of the board 
Uh, knight g3 check is played. It doesn't matter if knight f2 is played either, actually, because this is just, you know, queen takes d5. The queen's getting hungry again for these pawns, and the pawns are just getting dismantled there with a huge advantage for white. So um, knight g3 was, was chosen. And we have king h2, h5, rook g1. Yes, it doesn't look very nice at all, this position. We have c3 being played and desperately h4. But, you know, knight takes d5. Black's getting torn to pieces here. And now knight f6. Check is played, but rook takes. It's very desperate. This doesn't really do anything. Of the check here, in fact, the game ended. White is going to just win more material here. So black kind of auto line. White just plays king takes h4 and there's nothing for black. For example, here knight takes e4. Okay, so that was the uh, the monster of the tournament, Stockfish, just kind of dominating the entire game here. There was no real attack. Stockfish kind of found a way of basically trapping the queen. So it wasn't really the brilliance of Stockfish you know, sacking queen here, Telstar, but rather forced onto it. It was it just seemed to be vastly out calculated, and never had any real counterplay and just ended up losing lots of material a real brutalization of stockfish by the leader of the tournament stockfish nn so stockfish nn is a real monster as you can see from this game and uh, can just really just take take apart certain engines totally take them apart yeah <laughs> Okay, so I hope you got something out of this game. Uh, I've got a new course, by the way, Kings Crusher TV slash Opening Tango. Check that out. There's uh, I put on a special uh, discount for you guys for the next few days. It's at its lowest possible price as allowed by Udemy. So, and it's over ten hours of amazing. You know, my content is amazing, amazing video content over ten hours for the Tango system. So if you want a surprise system with the black pieces, especially great at faster time controls, you've got to check that out and you'll learn all sorts of weakness provocation strategies and tips and tricks. Uh, there's also the bit.ly slash Leela Chess playlist or bit.ly slash Stockfish Chess. Uh, there's the King's Crusher TV Discord link for the Discord chat. And if you want to challenge me at Chess World, bit.ly slash Chess World, just register there. I'll be able to invite you for a game five days a move. Okay, comments, questions, like, share, subscribe with the notification bell. Really appreciate it. Remember, all those likes and mentions on Twitter or whatever, they really help the algorithms. So, you know, that really helps me on YouTube. So I really do appreciate that. Feed the YouTube neural network algorithms as much as you can. Much appreciated. Thanks so much.